Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to A Stoic Plays, and today I'm stoically playing a game called Everything. That's right, folks, Everything. This is a game by David O'Reilly, and it's less of a game, honestly, and more of a philosophical exploration of life and the connectedness of all things in life. Throughout the game, you were played sound clips by a British-American philosopher by the name of Alan Watts. And I was not familiar with Mr. Watts up until this point, but uh, after playing this game and looking him up on Wikipedia, I've learned that Alan Watts was actually uh, interested in Eastern spirituality and philosophy, and he was instrumental in bringing that teaching to the United States. So anyway, right now I am an atom. I think I am beryllium, actually. So in this game, it's called Everything, and they mean it. You can be everything. And the purpose of it is to be everything. That's like the only goal I could really think of to describe this game. Mostly you just kind of wander around, do whatever you want, but they, it does keep track of how many things you have become. And you can move up or down. You can ascend or descend in terms of the structure of what you are. So I'm, I figured let's start at the bottom. Let's start at being an atom and move our way up so you can get a feel for the game. So you kind of move around and you can see that one thing the game has you do, one concept, is that all living things, well, not even all living things, all things in the universe sing. That is, they create a, a sound or a feeling, and you do that by pressing the space bar. And when you sing and you get close to their objects, you interact with them, and you can find out what they are, and then eventually, see, I'm beryllium, and you can move on to something else. So I'm trying to find something that I can, something I could jump onto. It looks like all there is right now for me is another beryllium, which I don't want. So let's um, let's move up toward these guys. Look like bacteria. Let's see. And you get close to something, and you just sing until it resonates to you. All right, so now I've got it. I can go to this thing. I can ascend, and you ascend by pressing the right mouse button. If you want to descend, that is, go to a more magnified state, you press the left mouse button. Then you hold it, find what you want to ascend to, and let go. Okay? So now what am I? Now I am a Schizosaccharomyces pombe, which is a fungus. And that's... Essentially the game. I hesitate to even call it a game. It's more like an interactive experience. You kind of float around singing. And you learn about other things. And then you warp to them. So now I become this thing. Which is... Uh, pollen. It's a Serenese pollen. And as you float around and do your thing, you also bump into... These little bubbles, you see here, it looks like a little cloud in the middle. And those are just little quotes that the game throws at you. Like, you owe me $214 and you know it. Pay up or else. They're kind of just absurdist. A lot of them are philosophical. That one was kind of odd. When you see one like this, which looks like a bunch of circles, like a bullseye, it's actually a recorded speech by Alan Watts. And you can listen to it by pressing the X button. And we'll do that for this one. This one's called a Whirlpool in Water. Your skin doesn't separate you from the world. It's a bridge through which the external world flows into you. And you flow into it. Just, for example, as a whirlpool in water, you could say because you have a skin, you have a definite shape, you have a definite form. The whirlpool is a definite form, but no water stays put in it. The whirlpool is something the stream is doing. And exactly the same way, the whole universe is doing each one of us. And I see you today, and I uh, recognize you tomorrow, just as I would recognize a whirlpool in a stream. I'd say, oh yes, I've seen that whirlpool before. It's just near so-and-so's house on the edge of the river, and it's always there. So in the same way, when I meet you tomorrow, I recognize you, you're the same whirlpool you were yesterday. But you're moving. 
The whole world is moving through you. All the cosmic rays, all the food you're eating, the stream of steaks and milk and uh, eggs and uh, uh, everything is just flowing right through you. When you're wiggling the same way, the world is wiggling, the stream is wiggling you. But the problem is, you see, we haven't been taught to feel that way. The myths underlying our culture and underlying our common sense have not taught us to feel identical with the universe, but only parts of it, only in it, only confronting it, aliens. And we are, I think, quite urgently in need of coming to feel that we are the eternal universe, each one of us. Otherwise, we're going to go out of our heads. We're going to commit suicide, collectively, courtesy of H-bombs. And, uh, all right, supposing we do, uh, well, that will be that, and there will be life making experiments on other galaxies. Maybe they'll find a better game. All right, right now I'm a crystal shard, and I'm trying to become this tick, but... For some reason, I'm not able to sing in such a way to resonance to kind of become it, which makes me sad. But you can ascend. So now I am. I'm on the ground. Or I might still be underwater. Yeah, I'm still underwater. I am. And you find out what you are by moving around and singing. Oh, let's be one of these guys, can we? Yes, we can. Okay. All right, now I'm a beetle of some kind. I'm a rye brew. All right, let's go over here. And whenever you see these multicolored ones, they're actually hints that the game gives you on how to proceed. Hi, Marcus. I was wondering where you'd got to. By now you've seen, or you've been able to see a lot here, but not everything. When you first arrived here, there was a golden object in front of you. Do you remember it? It might feel distant now, but it's still there. This is a gate made by things who weren't able to see how you see. Many things entered it, but weren't able to come back out, so we kept it locked. I'm going to open it for you, but it's up to you if you want to enter. Good luck, and take care. Return to where you began. You can now descend into the Golden Gate. Well, I'm so far away from where I began, I can't do that. But I'm going to be a mushroom. And when you find other things of the same kind as you, I am M. Camaro. Let's this thing right here, for example. Let's say I become this thing. Well, when you find other things that are like you, I'm a Gregra. It's a fungus. You can push the V button to have them join you. So now I'm multiple of these guys. And when you have multiple of whatever it is that you are, you can push the 8 button to dance. They call it dancing. But what it really allows you to do is reproduce. Once the circle is filled up at the top, you press the X button and another one of whatever it is you are is created. See that? And again, the real, the only real goal of the game, and as much as there is a goal, is to be all the different things. You can see that as I become different things, it says, okay, you've now got 15% of funguses explored. Or fungi, I should say. I had a beautiful dream last night. An amazing, surreal, life-changing dream. And I forgot every single bit of it. Alright, let's ascend. Alright, so now, I'm some kind of grass. I'm Jarena. So let's go over here and become this. This is get bigger and bigger. And so now I am a Grelea. I'm still underwater, I think. It's hard to tell, but I think so. Let's go listen to some more Alan Watts while I uh, try to get out of this lake. Things that happen to us. I wonder if it's ever struck you how curious a thing it is that most of the things that we experience we regard as things that happen to us. So now I'm a continent. 
which we ourselves do not originate, which are events expressing some sort of power or activity that is external to ourselves. And if you consider that, you realize that what you mean by yourself is rather narrowly circumscribed. Even events that go on in our own bodies are put in the category of things that happen to us in the same way as things that go on in the world outside our skins. If there's a thunderstorm or an earthquake, well, it happens to you. You're not responsible for it. But so in the same way, when you have hiccups, you didn't plan on it. If you have belly rumbles, you had no intention of doing it. And as to the catastrophic act of getting born, well, you had nothing to do with that. And you can spend all your life blaming your parents for putting you in the situation in which you find yourself. And this uh, way of looking at the world in this sort of passive mood as something that happens to you goes right down to our general feeling about life. It goes down to the way in which we have been accustomed to look at human existence as a precarious event in a cosmos that uh, on the whole is depicted as being completely unsympathetic and alien to our existence. Okay, so what you just saw while he was talking is I went from being like an object in a world to then becoming the continent of an alien world. And then I rose up from being the continent to being the world itself. And then I rose up from there to become what I am now, which is some kind of galaxy. Unfortunately, when Watts is talking and the subtitles are up, you can't really see what you are. Everything does it differently while it does everything differently. And everything it does is different also. All of it is the same. Now, the little circle at the top tells you what you could do. Like when there's an arrow to the left or right, it means there's something larger or smaller that you can become. And when there's an arrow to the up or down, it means that you can ascend or descend. And again, you ascend by the right mouse button and then by moving the circle up to the triangle, or you can descend the same way. But for right now, I wanna see what this is because it's XXX. It's some form of galaxy, I'm sure. Ah, it's a diffuse nebula. That's pretty cool. So let's ascend even further. And then we're in this kind of quasi zone beyond the three dimensions of space that we're familiar with. So right now, I am a, th a thing. I'm not sure what I am exactly. Let's move on to this though. And this is there must be a way to push a button and it'll tell you what you currently are because unfortunately if you are something for the second or third time it doesn't tell you but if you've never been something before then it'll tell you so the irregular nested structure all right but let's ascend from there there we go and once again, I am kind of a bacterium thing again. Or an atom, I should say. So I'm not sure if that last part is larger or smaller than this, but now I'm silicon, but then I can become this. I wanna find you some animals though, because that's where the game really kind of shines. Now I'm a chlorine bacterium. I just want to keep ascending, but I'm on this crazy alien world, and I want to get to a uh, a normal world. So I guess the way to do that is go to the planets. I'm a crystal shard again. Let's ascend. All right, well, I'm this beetle thing again. I'm an Aldera. All right, let's listen to another quote from Alan Watts. If you are reared with a 20th century, or shall we say an early 20th century common sense, which is based on 
the philosophy of science of the 19th century. Uh, you regard yourself as an accident, a biological accident, in a stupid universe, which is mechanical, but has no feelings. Ooh, that's cool. A vast, pointless gyration of radioactive rocks and gas in which uh, you happen to occur. Of course, if you don't have that point of view and you are more traditional, you look upon yourself as a child of God. And therefore, under authority. In other words, there's a big boss on top of all this. And uh, you better watch your P's and Q's because that Almighty is looking after you with the attitude of this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. And when you look at the world in that image, or in the other image, that it's a stupid mechanism, either point of view you take, uh, you don't really belong. You are not really part of all this. Uh, or to put it in the strongest possible way, it is quite alien to our thought that the external world, which is defined as something that happens to you, and your body itself as something that you got caught up with, it is quite alien to consider all that as you yourself. Because, you see, we have such a myopic view of what one's self is. All right. So I'm this crazy little hopping creature, and I managed to get a bunch of them, but I saw some reindeer over here, reindeer-looking things, so I'm going to try to become them. There we go. And just to save their animation budget, I guess, creatures don't walk so much as I'm a midnight deer. They don't walk so much as they just kind of do somersaults everywhere. But I can get a whole posse of deer. And you can you could click V to add one at a time, or you can hold V and it'll just add all of them that are near you. So now I am a giant posse of somersaulting deer. Going through this alien world. Well, I lost. I managed to lose some deer. No, there they are. And there's more of that bacterium thing it's still following me too. So yeah, and it just it just never ends. You just can go on and on and on, discovering new places, new animals. Let's say I want some more deer. Let's do a little deer dance. And baby deer. There we go. Another one. And another one. And another one. Alright, so we've got a bunch more deer now. A bunch of babies. Die. Owe me all that much. They used to talk about it does it, though. Huh. Alright, let's become this. This is some kind of alien tree. I hope this won't be my last spring. I have a strong feeling it will be. I'm glad I got to see it. I'm a LaFalta. And I could let's gang up with all the other LaFalta. Let's get a grove. So now I'm a grove of trees. A migrating grove of trees. And you just kind of move around and interact with the world. Find little thought bubbles. Read what they have to say. All my friends say the faults don't feel pain. That you're just some kind of thing out there sort of doing something. But nothing very important. I don't really know why it's wrong for me to kill a Baleba, but okay to kill a Lafalta. A Baleba must be another type of alien tree. Let's try to let's try to get out of here. And find a world more like our own, because now we're in some kind of brown world. What is that? No, it doesn't want to tell us. It must be a kind of world I've already been before. But let's... Ooh, what's that? That's an interesting thing. It's like a ring world. Or not a... I mean a world with a ring. Yeah, a ringed rock planet. 
That's a new planet that I've discovered. I'm looking for like an Earth-like planet. I think that one might be one over here. Because if we find that, we can find animals more like the ones we're kind of used to. And there's another Alan Watts quote too as well. You can push the shift button, left shift, to move fast. Change your level of magnification. Now, we come here to an extremely important principle, which is the different points of view you get when you change your level of magnification. That is to say, you can look at something with a microscope and see it a certain way. You can look at it with a naked eye and see it in a certain way. You look at it with a telescope and you see it in another way. Now, which level of magnification is the correct one? Well, obviously, uh, they're all correct. But they're just different points of view. When we examine our bloodstreams under a microscope, we see there's one hell of a fight going on. All sorts of microorganisms are chewing each other up. And if we got overly fascinated with our view of our own bloodstreams in the microscope, we should start taking sides, which would be fatal, because the health of our organism depends on the continuance of this battle. What is, in other words, conflict at one level of magnification is harmony at a higher level. Now, could it possibly be, therefore, that we, with all our problems, conflicts, neuroses, sicknesses, political outrages, wars, tortures, and everything that goes on in human life are a state of conflict which can be seen in a larger perspective as a situation of harmony. All right, I think I've managed to find a normal sun, although I could be wrong here. Just looking for a regular planet. No, all these are all these are uh, question marked out, so that means I haven't found them yet. Yeah, it's a rock planet. We could check it out, though. Alright. Interesting, it's nighttime. We are a tree, it looks like. What kind of tree are we? We're a pom-pom pine. What are those things? What's this? All right, this is some kind of grass. We're a palm lily, but now if I can make friends with this animal by, again, singing to it, by pushing the space bar, I might be able to, uh, to bond with it, but it looks like I'm not yet able to. There we go. All right, we're good enough friends now. And now what am I? I'm a pronghorn. Let's get a buddy. Pronghorn number two. There's some more pronghorns over here. Hey guys, want to join us? Yeah. We're a big squad of pronghorn. There's another one. And another one. Alright, so we've got quite a few. We're tearing across the savanna. This guy, oh, these are like moose antler things. All right, cool. On one world I had uh, penguins. They were awesome. I had like a gang of like 15 penguins. They were just roving around, causing trouble. That'd be neat if I could find some penguins here. But again, this is kind of like an alien world. My parents keep telling me to grow up, but I don't know how to grow any faster. I'm trying. Hey guys, you seen any penguins? Let's look over here, what's that? No, that's like a little goat thing. Let's go to it. Leave our pronghorns behind. It's a bighorn sheep. All right, sweet. Let's somersault around the, the ice caps of this world. And see what we can see. Just some deer. 
So it's a really calming and relaxing game. Or experience, you know? Like, even though it doesn't have any structure or goals, really, it's still interesting just to see... Like the philosophy talks about, seeing the world from different perspectives, different levels of magnification, seeing how everything kind of interacts together. Although I'd love to find some penguins, that would be cool. That was fun. What's this over here? What are you guys? You're sheep of some kind, yes? Yep, you are sheep. Well, that's some philosophy of its own right there. But we are a lot of sheep, and we are mighty. Mighty somersaulting sheep. Let's go over that quote. What's that? What's that? Oh, some kind of cat or something. Maybe a rodent. Events with intervals between them. And you could say, aha! At last, I see. I got the point. I've seen how all this makes sense. But what this insight depended upon was your overcoming the illusion that space separates things. That is to say, the space, the interval between your body and mine. The uh, interval created by birth at one end and death at the other. And then after somebody's death, then somebody else's birth. Uh, these are events with intervals between them. And normally we regard these intervals in time and these intervals in space as having no importance, no function. We tend to see the universe itself as really consisting in all the stars and galaxies. That's what it is. That's what we notice. But the space in which all this happens is sort of written off as something that isn't really there. But what one has to realize is that the space is an essential function of the things in the space. After all, you can't have separate stars unless there is a space around. Eliminate the space and you will see you couldn't have this phenomenon at all. And vice versa. You couldn't have the space. They wouldn't be there in any sense whatsoever if there weren't the bodies in it. So the bodies in the space and the space are two aspects of a single continuum. They're related together in exactly the same way as a back and a front. And you just don't get one without the other. And now I'm a gigantic horde of mountain lions. And again, I've only been 9% of the animals that you can be in the game. So I'm not even close. Let's move up. I'm a big tree now. I'm a redwood. All right. It's not really what a redwood looks like, but they're trying. Let's ascend. All right. Now, I don't think you can go to the moons that kind of circle around you, but I would like to attempt another world. That looks like a good one. That looks vaguely Earth-like. Interesting. Haven't seen it before, so it's an ice planet. Like Hoth. Alright, let's go down into it. Alright, I'm just a... an iceberg. Or an ice flow. There's an ice continent. Let's go down into it. Awesome! Ooh, what's that? Like rabbits? Hey guys, I want to be friends. Oh, it's a polar bear. Yep, you are a polar bear. Is 
There we go. Now, I am... Oh, you know what? I can transform. Oh, yeah, you can transform into things by holding E and then scrolling down and finding out what you want to transform into. Let's just go to an animal. Oops. Animal. Alright, but that's not the particular animal that I want. There we go. There we go. Let's be... Oh, I can't be a, a penguin? But I've been a penguin before. Oh, maybe it's a bird. There we go. Oh, that didn't work. Awesome. Yes. Now, now we're a posse of penguins. Nothing will stop us. But yeah, so that's everything, folks. That is, that's the name of the game, everything. You just, the goal is to be everything, to experience everything by befriending things first, by hitting the space bar and singing to them. And then once you've gotten close enough to them that they allow you to kind of merge with them, then you become them and you go around and interact with the world. And it's a fun little way to spend a Saturday afternoon. You know, it's interesting, the music's nice, it's relaxing, and it's very calming and beautiful. I'm amazed that they were able to, I mean, obviously the textures aren't super high definition, but they're, the sheer volume of all you interact with in the game is uh, really impressive, really impressive. So once again, everything is a game by David O'Reilly, Oh, and one last thing I probably should show you before we end is that you can set autoplay. Which will, uh, the game just kind of goes on its own. And you watch it. I think you can automatically go into autoplay by just, yeah, by just not moving or anything. And then it just kind of, almost just like a screensaver. You just kind of watch as your creatures kind of walk around and interact. Looks like I just became a rock. And now the rock is rolling. Let's see what it does. It's gonna... I'm a large rock. Oh, I was gonna roll off the cliff, but then I guess I thought better of it. And now I'm going back. Oh, there we go. Now I'm backed up. Now I'm a tree? Yep. So yeah. So if you don't want to actively kind of move around. You can just kind of sit and watch and let the game play itself. And there are multiple settings of that, too. Oh, look, they're Roar Borealis. That's super cool. And, yeah, so you can... As you can see, there's many settings with autoplay. Like, listen, sing, join, like, what... creatures that are autoplaying can do and the rate at which they can do them. So you can ascend often or rarely, you know? So that's kind of neat. So once again... Everything by David O'Reilly. I'm Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.